Well, um, Pastor Bert allowed me to take this Wednesday night and be able to share with you. Um, so I get to teach tonight. And um, I'm excited to share with you. There's a lot going on in the world right now. And I, I'm sure I don't need to explain to you, especially you adults, all that's been going on. But um, there's a lot that we can talk about. Uh, but specifically for tonight, God put one thing on my heart um, to share with all of you and to, for also as an encouragement for myself to be reminded of, and that is the cure for fear. The cure for fear. There's a plethora of things that could cause us to be living in fear right now, but God's heart is that we wouldn't be living in fear. What is fear? Fear is an emotion expressed um, experienced by everyone around the world. All of us have the tendency to live in fear. Fear arises with the threat of harm, either physical, emotional, or psychological, and it can be real or imagined. There's things that are rational fears and also irrational fears. When faced with this virus, we may have uh, fear for our health. When we see violence and evil on the television, we may have fear for our safety. When our economy wavers, we may have fear of what tomorrow may hold. And when we think of our mortality, we have a tendency to fear for our very lives. But our Heavenly Father does not want us to live in fear. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. <clears throat> We're going to be flipping to a lot of scriptures tonight. I don't know how many of you guys remember sword drills as kids when we call out a scripture and you see how fast you can turn. So we'll see if you can keep up as we jump around from scripture to scripture. But 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. This thing we call fear, this emotion that wells up in us when we are presented with difficult situations, when we feel that threat of harm, um, it's common to all mankind. But that spirit of fear is not from God, and it's not what God wants us to um, to be dwelling on. It's not how God wants us to live on a daily basis. Again, he says he has not given us that spirit of fear, or the other word for it is timidness. He wants us to be bold. He wants us to be strong, and he wants us not to fear. He says he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you turn on the television, hopefully you're not watching too much TV because it can cause us to go that way. When I watch TV, when I click through the news or I'm swiping through on my phone and, and seeing things pop up, it's pulling me in. It's like this pull to, and it's like a call and an invitation to latch onto those things in fear. And my, my mind starts running at 100 miles per hour. I start, my mind starts going that way. In contrast, when I open up God's word and I, I read what God says, my mind starts to go the opposite way. I have a peace. I have um, a calm about me because I know um, who God is. And so that's God's ultimate plan for us, is not that we would have a spirit of fear, not that we would go through this challenging time and this season with a spirit of fear, but as believers, we can look to him as our hope. Knowing that we would struggle with this, God filled the scriptures with instruction and encouragement against fear. Beginning in the book of Genesis and continuing throughout the book of Revelation, God reminds us to fear not. So tonight I'm just going to give you three simple points, um, three simple reminders of what is the cure for fear. Point number one would be take it to him. Take it to him. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Take it to him. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
let your request be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. When you start becoming fearful of a certain situation or um, a, a difficult thing arises in your day, and you have that temptation, that, that thought to, to start diving in and following that train of thought to a fearful mindset. He says, be anxious for nothing in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Now, here's the thing with prayer. God already knows what we're going through. He already knows our thoughts, our fears, our anxieties. But as we take it to him, what it does is it allows us to get our minds back on track and fixed on him. It allows us to take our eyes off of the storm and to fix our eyes onto God himself. That's when our fears start to fade away as we take it to him. It's the process of us coming before our God, our creator, and saying, Lord, I need you in this moment. I need you to help me with this circumstance and with these fears. Psalm Chapter 56, verse 3 says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Is that something that you can say, like the psalmist said? Can you say, whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you? Or for, for me and for you, maybe it's most of the time when I'm afraid, I trust in you. Or when it makes sense to me, Lord, I will trust in you. God wants us to call upon him and to say, Lord, whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Psalm verse, uh, chapter 55, verse 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. So he's calling us again to bring it to him, cast our burdens on him and he'll sustain us. First Peter chapter five, verse seven, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. It's so comforting to know the Lord. And one thing that's been common in, in our prayers as we've been navigating this season is, Lord, we're so thankful for your presence. We're so thankful, God, that we have you because how do you deal with some of these difficult situations without God? How do you get through your day when you're not sure what's going to happen? And there's a lot of fear and anxiety. When you listen to the news, you can hear it. When you read people's posts, you can see it. There's fear in our world right now. And again, the cure that God is providing here is himself. God wants to get you through this storm. God wants to be your strength and your guide. God wants to give you peace, but we need to take it to him. I want you to think about one of your fears for a moment. Think about something you've been worrying about. Think about something you've been anxious about. And I want you to ask yourself this simple question and just be honest with yourself. Have you taken that to prayer yet? Have you taken that one thing that's been bugging you, worrying you? Have you taken it before the Lord? Have you spent time in prayer and have you really cried out to him and asked him to be your strength? Have you asked him for wisdom on what to do? Have you asked him for protection and safety in those fears? God wants us to come to him. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 34. Psalm 34, Psalm 34, starting in verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my, what? Fears. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I love this verse. I love the fact that when I bring my cares to God, when I set my mind upon him, verse one says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Again, have you brought these fears and things to the Lord? Have you 
taking time each day to say, Lord, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm fearful of. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Now notice he doesn't say, I will deliver you from every situation. Pastor Bert taught on this um, a while ago and he was saying sometimes the Lord delivers us um, from the storm, but sometimes he just calms our heart as we go through the storm. The Lord wants to meet you in the middle of your fears. The Lord will deliver you from your fears as you place your trust in him. And it might not go the way that we think or plan, but know this, that God will get you through it. God has a plan and a purpose in it. So number one, take it to him. Point number two, listen to him. Listen to him. The cure for fear is to listen to him. The Lord tells us in scripture that we have an enemy who wants us to give up and to give in to fear. We need to decide if we are going to listen to the enemy or to listen to the Lord, right? We have lies coming in, telling us to give up. We have lies coming in, tell us that we need to be afraid. And then we have the voice of the Lord calling out to us and saying, do not be afraid. In scripture, do not be afraid is found 274 times. It's not just one or two verses. Over and over, as you read through scripture, God is telling his people and reminding them, do not be afraid. Why? How can the Lord say that? Because he knows all things. God knows everything that will take place. He sees our future. He knows what's coming. And as we put our trust in him and our hope in him, we don't need to be afraid. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them for the Lord your God. He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. So listen to the Lord. Listen to those reminders as you start to um, find yourself during the week in fear, living in fear, living in worry and anxiety. Listen to that voice of the Lord. Listen to him and, and his call to you to say, when he says, do not fear. Listen to that. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy to give up and to be afraid. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These are amazing promises from the Lord and encouragements to us. So why is it that we go through our day with so much anxiety and fear? Do we really have our eyes on the Lord? Are we really putting our trust in him? Have we taken all things to him? Are we listening to him as he says, I'm with you. I will strengthen you. I'm going to get you through this. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 5. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Again, God knows you. He knows your situation. He knows your life better than you do. And so as we fix our eyes upon him, and as we listen to him and his encouragement, the fear again will start to fade. As we listen to him, um, he has also taught us to fix our minds on good things. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Starting in verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren... Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Again, we have a choice to make each and every day of whether or not we're going to take our cares to him and listen to him and listen to his promises, fix our eyes on him and set our minds 
on him or set our mind on the things of the world. When we set our mind on the things of the world, scripture says we walk in the flesh. But when we set our mind on the things of God, when we set our mind on the things of the spirit, we'll walk according to the spirit. It's a choice that we have of where we're really placing our trust. And it got me thinking, um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been bungee jumping. It's something that I've always thought about doing, but I don't really know if I'm brave enough. Bungee jumping seems a little, um, it causes fear to well up in me because ultimately it's, it's a big rubber band, right? <laughs> That's what you're, you're, do, you're strapping a big rubber band. But how would you feel if you signed up to go bungee jumping and you get up to the top and instead of the huge bands that they have all corded together and the harnesses, what if they actually just had rubber bands <laughs> linked together? How would you feel if you got up there to that platform and, and they clipped on a rubber band onto your belt loop? It would cause you to fear, right? Why? What is it about that that makes us feel anxious and our palms start to sweat? It's because I am in no way going to place my trust in some little rubber bands, right? When we have the proper setup and equipment, when we, we can place our trust in um, that thing and, and our fears start to go away. You, there would still definitely be some fear, right? If you went bungee jumping. But again, where we place our trust is really a huge key to how much fear we have in our lives. The proper equipment with the full bungee cord team and the harnesses and everything versus some rubber bands. And again, in life, if, if we place our trust in the Lord, we can just jump off that platform and say, okay, Lord, you've got me. I'm just going to jump. And when I see people bungee jumping, they're having a great time. They're screaming and laughing, and it's great. They got their GoPros, and everything's awesome. But again, if you were to place your trust into something that couldn't hold you, like just little flimsy rubber bands, then you do have reason to fear. If we go through life placing our trust in ourselves, if we place our trust in money, if we place our trust in government, if we place our trust in anything other than the Lord, there's not going to be that peace. We won't have that ability to fully trust and to fully jump because there's fear. But when you place your trust in the Lord, when you listen to his promises and when you listen to him, we can fix our mind on him and he will give us that peace. Again, Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, if there's any virtue, anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So we're setting our mind on good things. We're not dwelling on the things of this world. These things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. If God tells us not to fear, why is it that we give in to fear? If God tells us to think about good things, why do we focus on our fears? Why is it that we dwell on those things? We need to make the decision to listen to him. He's God, our creator. He's the one who knows how all of this works and all of this ends. And as you listen to him, again, your fears will start to melt away. Number three, the cure for fear is to abide in him. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is a, a well-known passage, but again, it's all about putting this into practice. It's all about us listening to God's word and taking it to him and saying, God, as I walk through this valley, as I walk through this season, as I go through this storm, God, I'm going to stay close with you the whole way through. I need your presence. Again, as I was saying, 
God's presence has been the thing that has brought peace in the midst of all of this because I know that he's with me and regardless of what happens or what may come or if I do go through a valley of death, I know that I have the Lord with me. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You see, evil is still present. It's a dark valley. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be trials. But I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And that's the key, is to stay close with the Lord, to abide in him. Abide means to stay, not to run away. And, and I'm always reminded of, you know, with my kids, when we go for a walk around the neighborhood, um, they might hold my hand at first, but in a little bit, you know, within a few minutes, they're off running and, and doing their thing. And it's, it's always been a good picture to me as I'm walking with my boys, that the closer they stay to me, the, the more I can protect them and keep them safe if something happens. As they get farther away, it's, I'm not there with them anymore, right? And we do that with God sometimes. God never leaves us, but we try and run ahead of him. We try and go and go our way, but we need to stick with the Lord and abide in him. It says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Just like a good shepherd, right? Watching over, able and ready to defend us from anything that may come. Psalm chapter 46, verses one through two. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will fear no evil. Even though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So again, trials and tribulations will come. These verses don't say that if we follow the Lord, nothing bad will happen. It says that as we go through life, he will be there and he'll sustain us. He will be there. He will give us peace. He will be there. He will help take away the fear. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed, although the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You see, there will be difficult things in life. But again, God's presence is the key to getting rid of the fear. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24 and 26. It says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. I like that part. <laughs> Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Again, so many things going on in this world right now that can cause you to be anxious and cause you to worry and cause you to fear. But the question is, have you taken it to him? Are you listening to him? And are you staying with him? Are you abiding in him throughout the week? Or do you find yourself drifting? Do you find your, your eyes that were once fixed on him start to be going over here and going over there? As we fix our eyes on the Lord and abide in him, we don't need to be afraid of sudden terror or troubled when the wicked comes, for the Lord will be our confidence. Again, that confidence and, and assurance that I can jump knowing that God is there and with me, knowing that I can take um, that next step and God is going to get me through it, knowing that even though I don't see or understand how this is all going to work out, God is continually continually working out all things together for good for us, even through the difficult times and the hard times. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three says, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. The enemy seeks to cause us to give up, to throw in the towel, to live in fear, but God is throughout scripture reminding us that we don't need to live in fear. The key to overcoming fear then is total and complete trust in God. Total and complete trust in God. Trusting God is a refusal to give in to fear. You say, no, I'm, I'm not going to let my mind go that way. I'm not going to live my life in total fear of these things, but God, I'm going to take it to you and I'm going to put my life in your hands. It's a turning to God even in the darkest times and trusting him to make things right. 
Turn with me to Psalm chapter 27. Psalm 27. Verse 1. It says, The Lord is my light in physical things, earthly things. God Again, he created you. He has a plan and a purpose and and knows all your steps, every breath, every hair on your head. God knows it all. He knows how it'll end. But the most important thing to God is, is not that you would live and have a comfortable life. Not that you would live to be 112. God's heart for you is not ultimately that you would live forever here, but that you would live forever with him in a true relationship with him. And so God puts this invitation to us to put our trust in him, to say, God, I, I'm a sinner and I need you to save me. I've sinned against you, Lord, and I need you to forgive me. And as I place my hope and trust in the Lord, as you place your hope and trust in the Lord, there's this sense of um, release that it's no longer on my shoulders to try and save myself The Lord is now my salvation. What do I have to be afraid of? What do I have to fear? God is on my side. John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said to the woman, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. You see, when you put your faith and trust in the Lord, even something as scary and as fearful as losing your life, starts to change. It's changed in my heart to where I don't fear death in the same way that I used to. I don't, I don't fear the virus like I maybe would have before. Whatever God allows to come my way, whatever it is that God allows in my life, I can have confidence that ultimately he's got my life in his hands. And if at any point I die, it says here, Jesus said, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Life is not promised to any of us. And although that can be a scary thing, when you place your hope and trust in Jesus for forgiveness of sin and ask God to be your Lord and Savior, all of those things, again, fade away. In the book of Daniel, um, we have the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You guys remember that story? And Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3 are being threatened to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And as King Nebuchadnezzar challenges them and says, um, who's going to save you now? I want to read you just really quickly their response and think about the fear that they would be experiencing and feeling about to be thrown into the fire. They're about to lose their lives. Listen to this response. Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which we have set up, which you have set up. You hear the resolve in their hearts that they're going to follow the Lord. Even if we die, even if you throw us into this furnace, the Lord will deliver us. And even if he doesn't deliver us, even if we do die, we're still going to serve the Lord. We're still going to follow him. You see, As we place our hope and trust in the Lord, he takes away the fear that the rest of the world may have in those moments. He gives us a peace in those moments of difficulty and trial. And he he gives us this perfect peace and rest that only comes from knowing him. So a couple things to think about. Are you taking your fears to him daily? Or are you dwelling on them? Are are you sitting around thinking about them? Are you looking to the internet or to news or to YouTube 
to get answers and peace, it's only going to make it worse. If you're looking for peace in this season, look to the Lord. Take it to him. Are you listening to him and listening to his word to you? God says, I'm with you. I love you. I have a future and a hope for you. I have a plan for you. And even if difficult things may come your way, I'm working in those things. I'm going to use them for good. I'm going to use them to ultimately work out in you something far greater. Are you abiding in him? Or, or are you just trying to run each day on your own strength? And it's tiring. It's tiring trying to live life on our own strength, isn't it? To try and get through and navigate this, to try and raise your family, to try and work and take care and provide, to try and make sense of all the political issues going on, it's tiring. But God wants to give us rest. God wants to give us peace. And so we can take our fears to him, we can take our cares to him and have confidence that he cares for us. Once we've learned to put our trust in God, we will no longer be afraid of the things that come against us. When we take our fears to him, he gives us perfect peace. Philippians chapter 4 Verse six and seven, I want to read this again. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That is the cure for fear, is to take it to him and take everything to him, all this fear and say, Lord, I need you. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is good news for us. Good news for all of us tonight. And those of you watching online, God loves you. And he knows your fears and your anxieties. He knows the things that you're struggling with and, and worried about. And he's calling you and inviting you to bring it to him. Mark chapter 5, verse 36 says, Do not be afraid, only believe. Believe. Believe that there's a God who loves you and cares about you and wants to help you through this season, wants to help you in your fears. So the three points, let's say them together. The cure for fear is to, number one, take it to him. Two, listen to him. And three, abide in him. Take it to him, listen to him, abide in him. As we do that, he'll give us his peace to be able to rest, to be able to sleep well, to be able to say, Lord, whatever comes my way, even if I may lose my life, Lord, I'm, I'm confident that you are with me and that you're going to get me through this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your word that gives us encouragement, direction, and peace, God, in the midst of difficult situations, in the midst of fearful times, God, we can live without fear because of your pre presence, because of your promises, Lord. God, we thank you for the promise of eternal life in your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, any, for anyone who doesn't know you, who hasn't given their life to you, Lord, who doesn't have that assurance and, and is fearful, Lord, of what happens after we die, God, I pray tonight that they would surrender to you and ask you to forgive them of sin. Thank you, God, for the peace and the hope that you've put in our hearts, Lord. Thank you for adopting us into your family. And God, as your word says, you're a good father to us. You're a good shepherd to us who watches over us. And so, God, we can live in confidence each and every day, taking our fears to you, taking our cares to you, knowing that you care for us and that you're going to get us through this. Thank you, Lord, for your peace and your promises. We love you, Lord. We surrender our lives to you, and we just ask that you would help us to trust you more each and every day. Help us to cast our cares to you, Lord. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.